Right, morning everyone. So we are going to sort out this wiring today. So in my last episode, I talked about what we were gonna to do to stop blowing the uh, circuit here, so stop dripping the uh, 50 amp uh, breaker. Um, so we're just gonna put the current clamps onto the, um, uh, the Zappi device. I'm gonna be using some Cat5 cable um, to bridge the gap. So let's go up to the office and we'll draw out exactly what we're doing here. Welcome to the office. Um, I've got a drawing here, which um, I think will help just explain uh, the situation. So um, here is uh, here is um, the uh, the layout of the house. So what we've got here is the um, incoming supply just here, um, then the meter just there. Now we've got the Harvey uh, unit here that has got two uh, CT clamps currently on it. So this first one here is actually just measuring the uh, supply coming in uh, or the generation going out of the house. Um, so that will give you your, whether you've got energy being imported or energy being exported into the home. Then you've got this uh, clamp up here in the line that measures the solar generation. So this is purely measuring generation. So by measuring that and the incoming supply, you can actually work out what is being uh, consumed in the home uh, versus um, uh, how much solar generation you've got going on there. So then over here on this side, um, so you can see here we've got the 50 amp uh, feed into the garage, um, into the fuse box there, and then you've got the current Zappi unit there. So we could have put another CT clamp here because the Harvey's got three. Uh, so we could have put another CT clamp there and measured that 50 amp supply there. However, uh, I wasn't, I didn't want to do that because I wasn't sure if the monitor mode had to be local to the Zappi. But instead, what we're going to do is we are going to uh, put a clamp on at this end and take that wire to the Zappi and then um, I think in the future, what we will need to do, and hence why we're putting in a Cat5 cable uh, with a number of pairs in there, so we can we can do this. Um, it'll be much easier to do this again. Um, uh, when the wall box turns up, we will be getting uh, it, this. This is going to act much more like a battery storage than than it is going to uh, be um, than a car. So obviously, it's going to charge the car that way, but the car, the car is going to provide energy back into the house that way so if we uh, when we get that and when we get the breaker uh, in there we put another clamp just here somewhere and then that will go back to the zappi as well and so we will set this one up to be monitor monitor and then we will set this one up to be storage So the monitor will be set at something like 49 amps. It is going to prevent the Zappi and a number of other devices from, um, uh, from exceeding 49 amps. So the combined ampage, so this is 32, and this wall box will be 32 amps, so that's 64. Um, now, what will happen here is that the monitor, the Zappi will be monitoring this um, and it will it'll be monitoring on this, on this uh, supply here with this, uh, with this clamp. Um, if the wall box is using 32 amps, then Zappi will only you then use the balance, basically. Um, and then if there happens to be any other loads uh, within, the, within the garage, so there's, there is a, a socket circuit uh, and a lighting circuit, uh, which you know normally don't have that much on to be fair, uh, especially at night when these cars are charging. Um, but if anything else on this uh, on this uh, on this fuse board here um, was using any power, it would again 
uh, throttle itself back down. Um, these are by, these will be by far the uh, largest consumers of electricity uh, by a very, very long way. Um, so there is one other circuit in the garage uh, that you know a 32 amp circuit uh, for plugs, but that that's very unlikely to ever draw uh, the full um, sort of seven kilowatts um, that that it could be uh, could be drawn through there. So. So that's it. That's that's the explanation of what it is we're doing here. Um, not much else to say. Um, so let's get back into uh, the action and uh, see how we get on. Right now, I hope that made sense. Um, so we're just going to be putting this cabling in, which means we need to take apart the zappy, which means we need to turn the power off. So let's turn the power off. So now the Zeppi unit is depowered, we can open it up and we can then um, put the new Cat5 cable in and get that all wired in, ready to go. So here we go, and you can see the seal is uh, doing its job here. It's not very much of a seal, it must be said, um, but it is doing the job of keeping the water out, which is good. Um, and then you can see we're just going to have to pull that down a bit and access this grommet here. So we're going to go in from the back as these two uh, ports have been taken up with the mains cable in. Uh, so I'll just loosen this this off there. I'll probably have to take the zappy off the wall briefly, but there's only two screws, uh, three three screws holding it on. So that's not much of a of an issue. And then we'll make the hole in the wall for the new cable. And then here are the two. CT clamp ports here, which have got these little connectors on, and uh, that's where we'll put the CT clamps into there and there. So we'll just need to make a hole and uh, use this grommet, and then we'll be good. Right, so now we just take the zappy off the wall. Oh, one more. This is really good stuff, this um, Marksman stuff. You can get it in uh, wicks now, um, but it makes a mark on anything. Even if you push it through a, a hole like that um, and you just push it and it will make a little green mark. So you know where to drill your holes. Uh, we're not sponsored by that, by the way. Right, well, I'll just put a plastic bag over this while we're doing the drilling. Right, hammer time. It's only a single brick here, so it's pretty easy to uh, to put through. So we'll just get some of the we'll just get the Cat5. Here's the Cat5 cable. It's currently got its um, RJ45 um, end on, and as you can see, this has been resigned to the uh, to the bin because the tab is missing. Uh, like 90% of Cat5 cables you'll find in meeting rooms. So. Put it out of its misery. All right, and we can pass it through the old. All right, perfect. It's nice and nice and snug. Right, there we go. That's it done. We can put the zappy back on the wall now. Right, so just uh, strip off the sheath. Oh, this is slippery. The hell is this?
Right, this is actually better cable for the job anyway, because it's infrastructure cable, which means it's uh, not stranded inside. But also, if you look at the twists on this stuff, compared to that other cable, much tighter twists on the cable. Right, so we only need two of these. So there we go. We've got uh, CT1 and 2 ready to go. Right, one thing worth doing just before plugging this in is just to put a loop on this so that if anyone tries to pull it back for whatever reason. Right, that's it. So now we can close the zappy up. Right, so the rest of this installation can take place in the garage. Right, so now we're in the garage. Um, we've got the Cat5 cable coming through the wall here. So what I'll do is I'll put some conduit uh, up um, so that the Cat5 cable is protected. Um, and then um, we will uh, solder on the um, CT clamp. Now, like I said in the office, um, we're going to put one CT clamp on uh, just now, that's going to be the one that actually measures the total uh, load going through uh, on the incoming supply. Um, now, depending, as I say, because I'm not quite sure how the, the, the wall box quasar is going to work, um, but I'm assuming I will need another. So we've got a CT clamp around that breaker so that we can measure power going out, being stored in the car, and then the car supplying power back into the house, and then that will appear on the uh, my energy uh, app as uh, a battery um, so not conventional battery but uh, a battery all the same so let's get on with it So we're at a stage now where we've uh, got our wire all the way back to the fuse board and we've got our two pairs here uh, ready to go. Uh, now this is the, um, <coughs> the inductive clamp uh, from my energy. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to solder these two, uh, well we're going to solder this clamp to the, um, uh, to the wire uh, and then we're going to use just some heat shrink uh, to uh, make the job a good one. Um, so we'll do that now. Um, I think um, it's going to be easier if we leave a lot of slack at this end um, and then pull the slack back um, uh, through the through the zappy. Um, so the zappy might come off again, but I'll I'll spare you the um, the video of me doing that um, because that is just going to be a video of me pulling some cable back. Right, let's get on with this. Right, soldering irons warming up. Right, so we don't need any of this length on here. We can just cut this off. And we can use the cat five because that's all the way through. I'll just fold this green one over so there's no chance of these contacting because that's already attached to the zappy. I might I might just unplug that as well. Right, let's strip some of this down. Lovely. Perfect. And there we go. Great. There we go. So one inductive clamp onto the Cat5 cable and up in there. So this one's going around the main incoming supply. So 
so that's it it's in um, quite a small little consumer unit this one so it's a little bit tight for space especially around the live uh, conductor where we needed to get to um, but it's there um, so now we can set up the monitor mode on the on the zappy um, I'll tidy this wire away it'll easily coil up inside um, this unit which will be great because then um, when it comes time to fit the other um, inductive clamp I can unfurl it and, and solder it back on the on the small bench there um, rather than trying to do it up here which will be a complete nightmare so I'll leave that there for now um, and um, then when we get the other inductive clamp and the other charger um, we can um, get that uh, bit going as well so let's get this thing closed up and set it up I did just disconnect the uh, cable that we're not using and um, I swapped the cable we are using over to CT1 so that we can uh, set that up. Now we're going to CT inputs, CT1, and then we want to select the type monitor group limit 60 amps, 59 amps. 49 amps so there we go and you can see the current uh, ampage there and we hit OK right well that was super easy to program um, so really it was just the wiring um, that took the time there uh, actually setting it up in the Zappi was really really easy and actually that's one of the things about these my energy products I find them super flexible um, so the fact that they've even thought about this in their product is is amazing um, I wasn't particularly looking for it but obviously other people who watch this channel ha ha have been so it's really great um, it's a piece of functionality I didn't even know I needed until we thought about getting another electric car so this is brilliant this uh, investment is is paying off I hope the zappy lasts because the um, fascia panel is looking a bit sorry for itself but um, we'll see how that goes um, anyway thanks for watching um, I hope you found that vaguely interesting um, hopefully in the next one we'll be um, all about the new uh, car or um, the new charge point um, the car will probably turn up first and the charge point second but that's okay because we can charge it on this one for now um, but yeah hopefully that will all be happening soon so um, we shall see you in the next one don't forget to like share and subscribe cheers ladies and gentlemen the floor mats have landed hopefully the rest of the car won't turn up in bits